Yesterday, I was in Tomorrowland. Exactly six months ago, to the date, I celebrated my birthday, my double birthday. I joined a group of friends in Norway above the Arctic Circle. And we were hunting for the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis, surrounded by the majestic Lofoten Fjords. Little did we know that the next day I would suffer respiratory and cardiac arrest due to falling into a snow-covered crevice. Thanks to long years of breath work, open water swimming, and the collaborative efforts of those around me, I managed to survive miraculously unharmed to give you my story today. Waking up in a roaring rescue helicopter was surreal. It felt surreal. A bit like waking up probably from time travel or being injected in the matrix. But my awakening coincided with the crucible moment for all of us in this room and perhaps for all of humanity. As you are seeing the advent of artificial intelligence, which could mark the dawn of a new age, a new era for our species evolution. In the epic science fiction movie, 2001 Space Odyssey, from Stanley Kubrick released in 1964, prehistoric men were using a mammoth bone for the first time as a tool and as a weapon. More recently, in a blockbuster movie, Barbie, little girls are given Barbie dolls for a similar purpose. Today, we all are given generative artificial intelligence to embrace it and use it as a tool, as a weapon, or as a toy. In the Isaac Asimov's Foundation series, which was a masterpiece in science fiction released in the 1940s. The Galactic Empire avoids over-reliance on artificial intelligence by lessons learned from earlier AI crisis. They devise something called the Frankenstein complex, which restricts the development of autonomous AI systems and robots, which could get out of control ethical dilemmas surrounding the evolution and development of AI systems is very topical today. AI is like an alien form of intelligence which requires safeguards and restrictions. During my PhD research, I talked to and interviewed many global leaders, futurists and visionaries, asking them the question, how should we prepare for an AI-painted future? A sneak peek into the research research laboratories of today can give us a sense of what possible future scenarios we could expect in order to shape a better present. So for instance, we will see brain-human interfaces combined with exoskeletons, which will be a game changer. The internet, will become a brain net, which will be able to send emotions, real emotions, instead of emojis. This will revolutionize the way we interact with each other, but also the way we communicate and we entertain ourselves. Or nanotechnology will reform healthcare. Your toilet will be the first line of defense about many types of diseases, early warning you and devising uh, the appropriate medicine and treatment. But we're also becoming a multi-planetary species due to our curiosity for space exploration and increasing capabilities. 
self-replicating robots could help us build another human habitat on a different planet. But this level of change, unprecedented change, requires leadership in complex systems. Throughout the last 30 years, I have been researching the future of leadership and combining it with foresight techniques, which I like to call future intelligent leadership. So you might ask yourselves, how could I become a future intelligent leader? Well, striking the purpose, as you see on this picture, might be a good start, but probably not enough. So I devised a methodology for you to measure your future intelligence coefficient, or FQ, by combining Machiavellism and authentic leadership scores and putting them on a two-by-two -two matrix. Machiavellism is a trait characterized by manipulation and self-interest furthering one's own goals. It's becoming today very fashionable again as its reference to pragmatism and adaptability resonates with today's challenges. Authentic leadership, on the other hand, refers to a trait of people with high degree of integrity who are led by a moral compass, developing trust and building meaningful relationships within their teams. Now, the good combination, the ideal combination to become a future intelligent leader would be higher degrees of authentic leadership and lower degrees of Machiavellism, which you see on the right bottom corner of this quadrant. OK, Tabash, that's very cool. But so far, you might say, I thought it was enough to have a IQ, high IQ and high EQ. Why should you care? Why should I care about having also a high FQ? But great question. And let me answer it by giving you, sharing with you, five easy steps to become a future intelligent leader. First step, you will need to be adapting lifelong learners in the face of rapid technological change. Throughout my career as a United Nations diplomat, I lived and worked across four continents. I feel equally comfortable waltzing through the ballrooms of Vienna in the Hopburg as riding on horseback with local elders in the Hindu Kush mountains of Afghanistan playing Buskashi. My grandmother used to say, she, by the way, lost most of her family in the Holocaust. She said that they can take everything away from you except what is in your head. What matters the most, creating wealth is about expanding your mind and not what is on your, what type of car you have, what house you have, what is on your bank account. And I tried to live up to, this, to the principles of my grandmother all my life. But today we are entering a different time when our minds are not safe any longer. How to adapt to such a new reality? So step two, you will need future literacy and effective communication skills to thrive in the future. As an international civil servant, I had the privilege to have a first row seat witnessing and contributing to many historical transformations around the world over the past 30 years. Most recently, in the last decades, as a director of the World Health Organization, I have been witnessing COVID pandemic, which affected all of us in the world. The WHO uses anticipation and back casting methodologies in its uh, planning. And it's forecasted the COVID pandemic much earlier than 2019. They called it disease X, but no one listened. What we saw instead, despite expert warning, is chaos and disruption and not unity and collaboration. Now today, we have the evidence and the data to prevent the next pandemic. But our leaders prepared. Step three, 
embrace emerging technologies in order to evolve your innovation ecosystem. Everything I have done as a leader and a practitioner required the skills to look into the future. The skills to use anticipation and foresight techniques made the difference in my area of work. In the UN, we like to say, among others, that technology and science will connect us with nature instead of controlling it. Step four, embrace cross-disciplinary collaboration in order to solve complex problems. What I like to tell my students is combine your vertical subject matter expertise or hard skills with horizontal cross-disciplinary contextual knowledge or soft skills. A little bit like a T-shaped hammer with a practical grip, leverage strength, hitting the problems of the world on their head, gently playing the music. And finally, finally, step number five, value-based and ethical decision-making will be crucial in maintaining public trust. I personally practice mindfulness, presence, and breathwork every day if I can. It helped me during assignments to difficult and hardship hazardous places like Sudan, Somalia, Afghanistan, the Chechen border, or the Colombian jungle. I learned that values are like muscles. muscles. They need to be trained and used in order to keep them developing and strong. So in summary, in conclusion, I showed you the five main characteristics of future intelligent leadership. The more you see yourself on the right corner, the better prepared you are to lead into the future. My near that experience has become a case study at the Norwegian Re Rescue Services. I spent more than 15 minutes buried under the snow. I suffered something called snow immersion suffocation, or SIS. I did not see the bright light when I was in the crevice, but when I woke up on the helicopter, I felt like stepping out of Plato's cave, seeing the world in a different light and broadening my perspective. My brain is more thirsty for wisdom and knowledge than ever before. Plato proposed that leadership is the duty of those who learn the skills and the knowledge because of their love for wisdom. My grandmother's, my late grandmother's words cling in my ears. I hope that one day in the future, by the good use of AI and harnessing our minds, I might be able to have another conversation with her over a cup of tea in the virtual world. But for now, and in closing, I would like to leave with you with this picture of future intelligent Filipino Tarsiers and a small exercise, if that's okay. Relax in your seats and hold the hands of your neighbors, if you can, and close your eyes. And let's breathe together. One, two, three, in. One, two, three, out. One, two, three, in. One, two, three, out. And then take a big breath, big breath and hold it. And smile, S feel how you synchronize with everyone in the room and think of a future, a better future, a healthier future you want your grandchildren to inherit. Keep that thought, keep the smile and hold your breath. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And <sighs> you may breathe normally again, open your eyes. Keep the smile on your future intelligent faces and keep breathing. Thank you.